15 out of the 18 political parties in Nigeria are jostling for the governorship seat of Lagos State. Now, the 2023 Lagos State gubernatorial election will take place on the 11th of March next year to elect the governor of Lagos State. Of course, we know that Lagos is the economic capital of Nigeria. Now, concurrent with the elections to Lagos State uh, House of Assembly, um, as 27 other gubernatorial elections um, to all other state houses of assembly. Now, incumbent APC Governor Babajide Sanwalu is eligible to run for re-election and has been nominated by his party. Again, while some other political parties are yet to conduct its primaries, others are battling to the party crisis in picking their Guba candidates. Now, joining me to discuss this is Gwadebo Rhodes Viva. He's a politician and a former member of the People's Democratic Party. It's good to have you join us Always in the good studio. To be here. How are you? I'm good. Um, so, you know, when somebody hears that we're talking about the battle for the soul of Lagos, Lagos seems to be one of those places that if you are governor of Lagos, it's as prestigious as being the president of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. That's a bit exaggerated. But um, like I've said in my opening, we see a Babajide Samolu uh, getting a ticket of return. Mm -hmm. um, in PDP, we've seen uh, a person who moved from the APC to the PDP getting mm -hmm. the ticket. Um, but then we're, we're yet to hear f of other political parties. Um, Many would wonder if it's going to be a two-horse race, a three-horse race, or a four-horse race. Now, many have also pointed to the Labour Party as being an emerging third force. But do we see that um, as a party that has its structure in the ground here in Lagos? And would it be able to pull its weight come 2023? Okay. Um, so I can speak for the Labour Party. I can't speak for any other one. Um, I do feel that the energy that I see in the Labour Party currently, I have not seen in Nigerian politics in a very, very long time. Mm. You know, when people talk about structure, usually people that you have put in place and they have, um, they have responsibilities and they share, they get stipends or some money or some sort of reward system, and that's what keeps them interested. With Labour Party, you have people volunteering. You have people giving their time. You have people already meeting autonomously and just waiting for the structure to plug them in. Hmm. Right? You have people in ward groups. So there's no more just WhatsApp groups. It's now we're in the same ward. We are meeting mm -hmm. online, and then they are now meeting physically. Hmm. So the kind of election that's going to happen in 2023 is something that, Lagos State has never seen before. And it also is helped by the fact that we now have new electoral laws that will actually allow for the real reflection of voter turnout mm. to be seen. Because for a long time, it hasn't been. I mean, during my election, four local governments were held almost two days <laughs> while other local governments have been announced. You can't do that anymore. Mm. right? So you're going to really see the voice of the people in this election. Obviously, they're always going to try and, you know, reduce voting and, you know, try and stifle it in places where um, opposition might be strong. But it's going to be very different. <laughs> I, I don't think, I don't think Lagosians actually are fully aware because the wind is actually But they're the ones who are voting. So if they're not fully aware, how would they I'm be able to Lagosians, participate? Lagosians that are viewing it and thinking that it's going to be same of the same. The people that are very passionate, the people that are bringing all this energy, people that are going to register. Um, if, if you go past these spaces and you see the passion to get their voters' cards, right, those people are not trying to participate in the same of the same. Hmm. That passion is to create a completely new power structure. Hmm. And there's an emergence of an ideology. There's an emergence of an ideology. It's no more just, oh, I have the bad boys and I have the money to buy votes. No. It's not about who has the vision. Who is preferring solutions that make sense? What's your ideology? Can you speak well? Can you communicate your vision well? Hmm. And there's a group of society that normally stays away from politics that are going to be very involved in this next election. Why do you think that there's that change in the tone, in the body language, in the number of people who are now interested? Why do you think that is? Is it as a result of the Labour Party's movement or is it, an, maybe let's say, an isolated case of people tired of same-same? So, you see, it's, it's two things. 
one in every society. Every society works like a pendulum. So it goes from ultra conservative to ultra liberal, and then it swings back. You saw it in America with um, Trump coming in, and those those swings will always throw something new up. Now the fact that the people that have emerged as presidential candidates are six and a half a dozen. You have a situation where people, there's so many allegations against them. That kind of situation throws up somebody that now everybody's looking for somebody that does not have that much baggage, can prefer solutions and has a clear understanding of where they need this country to go. Hmm. And with the kind of situation we are in, in our dire streets with our finances in this country, you need somebody that's going to steer that ship, hmm. you know, off the cliff. And people are looking for that because now the Nigeria that we exist in today, you cannot say you're going to ignore politics. It's affecting everybody. I was calculating on my way here that if I needed to send a um, thousand pounds, it's almost like just short of a million. There was a time where that was four thousand pounds. And the people are not earning money like and keeping in lockstep with the rises in prices of everything. So even if you have money in your account, bad policy and governance is reducing the value of that money. Mm. You know, so people are looking at this and it's affecting them personally. And if there is somebody that shows that he is in this race to actually correct these wrongs and can actually, it's no more just about people that you meet the minimum. You have the school sat so you can be president. We won't see people that have the cerebral capacity to actually push this country forward. Because all these countries that we look at at advanced, look at the quality of minds that are leading those countries. Mm. You know, you can't, it, politics cannot just be about popularity contest and people dancing on the stage, you know, and being cool with the grassroots, but they cannot govern. Mm. We need to consider your capacity to govern. It's no more okay to just let us win the election. You win the election, elections last for one year, and we deal with four years of mediocrity and failure. Mm. I like how this is going. I love the narrative, the conversations, the jaw joying. But when it comes to walking the talk, are we? How certain are we that this will hold sway? I, I, I take you back to the local government elections just last year mm -hmm. here in Lagos. Appalling. Yes. Voter low voter voter turnout, voter apathy. Um, well, one can point to what happened in Oshu and Ekiti as isolated cases, but then let's look at. I mean, because if you look at government from the grassroots, that's the government that you're closest to most. Mm -hmm. How many people know who their grassroots leaders are? I agree 100%. So, again, as much as there is this movement of sorts, whether it be, I mean, people will vote for, on different platforms, mm -hmm. but how serious are we taking this? It's great that there is one movement, but that movement, is it enough to spark something within the average Nigerian? I ask this again because I want to bring it back to Lagos. Looking at the guys who... Let's say for the APC, the PDP, the ADC, and um, the Labour Party. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the personalities of these people who are running. And there are those who would say that, oh, well, the, government, the governor of Lagos State has done well, so let's bring him back. There are those who would say, well, we haven't seen anything. Let's him point to something that he's done for us. Mm -hmm. But looking at the, the qualities of the other three who are running against him, who is the incumbent, what are the qualities that they have or possess that could trump? you know, his possibility of returning. Um, again, I, I don't want to focus on individuals in the other parties, right? Um, I, I do feel that if you're talking about capacity, um, the APC tends to usually put people that have capacity forward. The issue is how their hands are tied in how they have to service the godfather that put them there. Mm -hmm. That's the main issue. So even when I sympathize and empathize with the governor, someone because I know that because of the way Ambody was removed, even if he wanted to do visionary things in Lagos, he cannot, right? No, because look at the kind of moves that Ambody made, and he was literally punished for it. That's my interpretation of what But if government, government is a continuum, and I'm guessing that that's what Lagos needs, what Lagos mm -hmm. wants, and this is why people pay taxes, to seek a continuity of sorts. Mm -hmm. If government is a continuum, why did Governor Sonwalu not continue in those developmental strides? So those, those are questions you have to ask him, right? Because like I said, these interests are mainly centered around the accumulation of wealth of the oligarchy in the APC. That's how I see it. But 
when I talking about this movement and going back to local government elections, you see, what I've found is because I've participated in local government elections myself, when you don't have candidates that create a source of excitement, candidates that people can see might give some kind of hope, rekindle hope in people, you find voter apathy will just run run through it. And also when people don't believe in the system at all. And that's why I said it's very amazing that this electoral, um, electoral act is going hand in hand with this movement, right? It's, it's, it's like this. So when they're seeing what's happening in Oshu and they're realizing that, you know what, our, once we can hold our polling units, our voices will be heard. Yeah. That gives people more faith, right? And you have a very inspiring candidate here in the, in, in the form of um, Peter Obi that has been consistent with his message. And people are buying into that message. And you find that that movement is going to come out in a very, very realistic form that you can touch. It's not going to be something that... i give you an example so I'm not just talking. Um, I was at the inauguration of Structures on Saturday. And these were people that came out. They were not expecting you to give them anything to go back home. They are not asking for any transport. They were, they were there to give their time, talking about how they can even give their money, right? And all they're asking for is a better Nigeria, right? It, it, politics, politics generally tends to attract people when you're in power mm -hmm. or they work in the hope that money is going to come and they will be beneficiaries of it. This is a completely different ballgame. But this, this, can we also isolatedly say that this mindset was picked up in a day? It's the system that created these monsters, right? When you say the system? It's the political system that created these monsters. I remember uh, a soundbite I listened to mm. by um, um, Paul, what's his name? Mulumba. And yeah. he was talking oh. about the fact that no matter how you know, um, lyrical you wax, mm -hmm. when you're done telling the people what you want to do, they say, well, in the interim, what are you giving to us? Mm. So I'm saying the system had created that mindset. Yes. The so system, how do we even start to so clear that mindset? So is voter apathy? Because, okay, look, with all this great, great grandeur of APC in Lagos State, barely one million people come out to vote out of 6 million people that are registered to vote. Let's even say 2.5 million of those people are fictitious. So we have about uh, 3.7 or 4 million people there. Let's just say 4 million people. 1 million people come to vote. 3 million are sitting at home with their voters' cards. So what will bring these people out? Right? It is... So when you talk about we're buying these people that have been created by the monsters, we're buying votes and everything, there's still a, like, 20%. The rest are sitting there in their house and you cannot buy their votes. They just need to be inspired enough to believe that when I give my time, it's going to yield a progress. It's going to take us to a more hopeful place. I, I right? li again, I like this. But uh, every time I talk about voter education, I'm either talking to an INEC official, I'm talking to a civil society person, but then the onus is purely on political parties. Mm -hmm. They have a right to, in fact, it's their duty to vo do the voter education exactly. thing. But how many parties do this? All we see is campaigns, like you said, and dancing in the streets and all of that noise. Is this deliberate so that certain people do not necessarily come out for the election? So that if I, the, I think, the, the I kind think, of the kind of things that we see in terms of vote buying yes. and and you know uh, electoral violence can continue to take place. Is that deliberate? I'm asking you because you're a party man. Yes, um, you see, a transition is happening, and this happens in all societies, right? You cannot give what you don't have. If you don't have the capacity to prefer a vision, you cannot give it. You might be grassroots, people know you, they drink with you, they like you, you are one of them, but can you take them to, a, to another level? If you, are one, if, you are one of, if you are one of them and you guys are so close and they put you in position for that, all you do is just take fact and probably share. Lifting the conversation, lifting the economy, you might not necessarily be one of them, but you have to be able to endear their hopes, endear their vision, endear their, their, their faith, right? And then the conversation can then get to a higher level. So that's one. And secondly, you see, if people are now pushing another narrative, 
dropping numbers. I remember when I first started in politics and I was talking about manifesto. People, you are talking too much. It's too much. You know, you sing a song. You come, you sing a song. You write what you sing with you. Everybody clap. Oh, I like him. He's a fantastic politician. He has not preferred anything that's going to lift your, better your life or your lot. But he sings well and he's likable and we like him, so we vote for him. That is the problem. That's the bane of our problem, right? But like I said, if 90% turnout had been happening in Nigeria, I'll be very worried. That 90% of people are buying into all this nonsense. But turnout is so low especially in Lagos. So when you start seeing a turnout that will reflect the cosmopolitan, sophisticated level of Lagos, I believe that we're in for, we're in for a good, we're in for an interesting 2020. So, so I ask that question that everybody always wants to ask. How do we see, or how soon do we see Lagos, for want of a better word, broken from the jinx of... A lot of people call it godfatherism. Some people say a one-party system. Mm. Do we see that changing in 2023 or should we look for another messiah? I, I see it happening in 2023. I see it without sure a doubt. I am, I am so confident it's going to happen. The, the energy. See, I've contested in Koa Party. Right? I've seen, people, I've seen people get their hope kindled and I've seen them come out. But you have to go and do convincing. convincing. I've contested in the PDP platform and I've seen how people were just tired of what was currently going on. So they voted voting because they were tired. Right? Then I've, I'm in the Labour Party now, and I see pure excitement, mm. hope, people giving their time for free, people donating money. The issue is now just conducting that and making sure you have a proper structure and just getting all these willing volunteers properly plugged in. And that's a good problem for a party to have. Finally, why did you leave the PDP? And, and what exactly um, is there in the, in the Labour Party that, I mean, because people would say that the, major, the main opposition of the APC in the state was the PDP. Yeah. Why Labour Party? Well, um, I left the PDP because some agreements were made and were broken. I don't want to go to into depth. Well, we, like, we want to go into it. No, you will. You will we want you will. to go into it now. <laughs> okay, so... What, what agreements were made? Well, I was, I was supposed to be the deputy, right? So that was the agreement for me to withdraw. And then that agreement was reneged on, right? And for me, I, I cannot join the APC based on my own principles. I can't join the APC. And the Labour Party for me it was just a natural fit. You know, it's ideology, it's people that appreciate intellect, several capacity. I was talking to the secretary, and I think he was interviewed recently, and we're talking about Claude Ake, right? So these people have a depth of political science and political understanding and an ideology. And secondly, the unions make up the Labour Party. Mm. And all I've advocated for since I entered into politics was that it's time for the working class, the people that believe in dignity of labor, the people that believe that, you know, my vote cannot be bought, to be responsible, stop being irresponsible and leaving elections to only people that are looking at their voters' cards as things to harvest every four years. Mm. You are the custodians of democracy because you vote your mind based on a vision that someone's preferring or a manifesto gets involved. So I could not be in any... The people, the core... And the excitement that's gingered into it is, is a beautiful thing. Are you being promised anything in the Labour Party? I'm, I'm in the running. Hmm. I'm in the running, yeah. I see. Well, um, Radio Viva Rhodes is a politician and a former member of the PDP, now in the Labour Party, who's in the running. Well, we wish you all the best. Thank you very much. And we hope to see you soon. Well, that's the show tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. It's, this has been Plus Politics. We'll be back tomorrow talking for development on the biggest stories in our political scene. I am Mary Anacom. Have a good evening.